The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Illinois, Ms. Newman, for 30 minutes. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the subject of my special order. Without objection. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I rise today on behalf of the transgender Americans who must fight every day for their right to live as their authentic selves. This Saturday, November 20th, marks Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day to honor the memory of the transgender and non-binary people whose lives were lost this year in acts of violence. Tomorrow, I am proudly joining my colleagues and fellow Transgender Equality Task Force co-chairs, Representatives Pramila Jayapal and Jennifer Wexton, to formally introduce a resolution to nationally commemorate this very somber annual observance. At least 375 transgender or non-binary individuals across the globe have been killed this year, 375. In our nation alone, it breaks my heart to say that so far this year, the Human Rights Campaign has reported at least 46 transgender or gender non-conforming people killed by violent means. We say at least because we believe this number is actually much higher due to the unfortunate prevalence of underreporting or misreporting violence against this community. They were friends, family, loved ones, parents, and they were taken far too soon. We must honor their memory with a commitment to fight anti-trans hate and violence anywhere it exists. And it is with this commitment that I now read the names of each of these Americans into the congressional record. May their memory serve as a call to action for all of us. Tiana Alexander, Samuel Edmund Damian Valentin, Bianca Muffin Banks, Dominique Jackson, 50 Bands, Alexis Braxton, China Carrillo, Jeffrey J.J. Bright, Jasmine Kennedy, Jenna Franks, Diamond Kyrie Sanders, Rihanna Pardo, Jada Peterson, Dominique Luscious, Remy Fennel, Tiara Banks, Natalie Smoot, Iris Santos, Tiffany Thomas, Carrie Washington, Jahira Dialto. Whispering Wind Bear Spirit, Sophie Vasquez, Danica Danny Hansen, Serenity Hollis, Oliver Ollie Taylor, Thomas Harden, Poe Black, E.J. Boykin, Adeline Evans, Taya Ashton, Shai Vanderpump, Tierra Marie Lewis, Miss Coco, Pooh Johnson, Desaya Monet, Brianna Hamilton, Kier Laprie Cartier, Mel Groves, Royal Poetical Stars, Zoella Rose Martinez, Joe Acker, Jesse Hart, Ricky Otomuro, Markeisha Lawrence, Jenny DeLeon. May we honor their memory today and every day. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will now yield to my colleague from the great state of Rhode Island, the chair of the Congressional LGBTQ Plus Equality Caucus, Representative David Cicilline. I thank the gentlelady for yielding and for leading us in this special order hour and for um, saying out loud the names of the individuals who we've lost. And I am proud today to rise in recognition of Transgender Day of Remembrance, which we will mark this Saturday, November 20th, and in remembrance of the transgender and gender non-conforming people whose lives were taken this year. 52 years ago, in the early morning hours of June 28, 1969, New York City police raided the Stonewall Inn, a popular gay bar in Greenwich Village. It had become a refuge and a well-known gathering place for LGBTQI plus individuals. 
This was the third such raid on Greenwich Village bars in a short period of time. Tired of harassment and blatant discrimination, patrons began clashing with law enforcement outside the Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street. This was not the first time LGBTQ plus people fought back, but these clashes sparked an uprising that would unfold over the next six days and fundamentally change LGBTQI plus activism in the United States and around the world. At the forefront of this uprising were transgender and gender nonconforming people like Marsha P. Johnson, the P standing for pay it no mind, a common response Marsha would say to questions about her gender. Too often, transgender individuals are left out of the story of the LGBTQ plus rights movement, especially transgender women of color like Marsha, as well as Sylvia Rivera and Ms. Major Griffin Gracie. These three icons and so many other activists like them were and continue to be the backbone of the LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. Ms. Major, currently in her 80s, continues to fight against the disproportionate incarceration rates of transgender people. Tragically, so far this year, at least 46 transgender or gender nonconforming people have been fatally shot or killed by other violent means in our own country. 2021 make, marks an alarming milestone for the, for the transgender community, the deadliest year on record for transgender and gender nonconforming people. Let me say it again, the deadliest year on record for trans and gender nonconforming people. This epidemic of violence particularly affects transgender women of color, specifically black and Latinx transgender women, who make up more than three quarters of the recorded 46 violent deaths this year. These deaths are horrific and we must act to end this violence. The right to live freely without fear of persecution or discrimination is one that every person needs and deserves. The Equality Act adds sexual orientation and gender identity as protected classes through existing civil rights law, ensuring that the transgender community would have the same protections as everyone else. And I am so proud that we've passed that out of the House and it's awaiting action in the Senate. The 2021 Transgender Day of Remembrance House Resolution, of which I'm a proud co-sponsor, commemorates November 20th, 2021 as a day of remembrance and memorializes the lives lost at the hands of anti-transgender violence in the United States and around the world. I urge all my colleagues to support this resolution. Now is the time to show solidarity with the trans community. They have done the work to bring injustice wrought against the LGBTQI plus community to light, and they bear the brunt of violence, abuse, and even death. It cannot continue. We must not let it continue. So as we remember the names of the transgender individuals that gave their life for this cause, we honor their legacy by continuing the fight to ensure that all people, regardless of gender, gender identity, are treated equally and justly in this country. The forces working against progress are strong, but we are stronger. And I want to thank Congresswoman Newman for being one of the co-chairs of the Trans Task Force of the Equality Caucus for the good work in developing this resolution and for leading this special order hour tonight. And I thank the gentlelady for yielding, and I yield back. Thank you, Congressman Cicilline, who is an amazing champion for the Equality Act and all things LGBTQI. So uh, I couldn't be more pleased to be his colleague. And another great colleague I'd like to introduce tonight, I'd like to yield to my colleague from the great state of California, the, uh, also a co-chair of the Congressional LGBTQ Plus Equality Caucus and the chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, where he champions legislation to serve our LGBTQ Plus veterans, Representative Mark Takano. Well, thank you uh, for yielding, um, Congresswoman uh, Newman. Uh, what a great uh, honor it is to be here today and under such you know, somber circumstances. Um, Madam Speaker, I hear, I'm here to, uh, today, I rise today in recognition of Transgender Day of Remembrance and Transgender Awareness Week. And it's with a heavy heart that I recognize that this has been the deadliest year on record for our transgender sisters, brothers, and siblings. And I want to share with you the names of three individuals that we lost in my home state of California. I grieve with the families, loved ones, and communities that lost these young people far too early for no reason other than hate. Rayana Pardo, age 26, was a beloved daughter and sister living in East Los Angeles who left behind a family and community that loved her deeply. 
She was lost in March of this year. Natalia Smut, age 24, was a, celebra was a celebrated drag artist from Milpitas, California. She gave captivating performances and had a courageous and creative spirit and was described by those who knew her as a jewel in her community. She was lost in April. Poe Black, also known as Oliver Jackson and Legion, was an indigenous, trans-masculine, and two-spirit activist and artist. He was a tireless advocate who used his social media platform to support various social justice causes, including by document, documenting his transition to educate and inspire his followers. And he was lost in May. Each of these young people leaves behind a network of family, friends, and a community upon whom they have made an indelible impression. I join their communities in honoring their light and legacy and share in the grief that they were taken from the people that love them. It is in remembrance of these three individuals that I say this, Transgender Week of Awareness cannot only be about awareness. It also must be about action. We cannot pretend that the rhetoric heard here in this chamber and in state houses across the country does not have a direct impact on the lives of transgender people. This year we have seen the introduction of over 100 anti-trans bills in state legislatures whipping up a moral panic around the identities of adults and targeting children. The dehumanizing debates over whether an individual should have control over their own body, whether they, can, whether they should be allowed to compete on the athletic field, whether they even exist, these arguments all connect directly to the types of attacks that killed Rayana, Natalia, Poe Black, and so many more. It is not enough only to recognize the devastating statistics. We, all must, we, must, we must also make policy decisions that recognize transgender people for who they are. And who are they? Their loved ones, community members, family members, individuals who add depth and richness to our society and are defined by far more than statistics, hatred, or bigotry. So this Transgender Day, remember those who were lost by making noise. Raise your voice against the persistent and dangerous misinformation about transgender identity. Raise your voice in celebration of loved ones, friends, family, and community members who are transgender. Raise your voice to support the next generation of transgender and non-binary young people so that they may recognize the great beauty and joy in their identity rather than living in fear or shame. Now we cannot bring those that have been lost back to their loved ones, but we can play a role in ensuring that other friends, families, and communities do not have to suffer a loss like Rihanna, Natalia, and Poe Black's communities did. So I call on my colleagues this year to turn awareness into action because making policy that centers the safety, equity, and prosperity for transgender people should not be an effort that lasts only a week, but it should be all year round and throughout the rest of our lives. So thank you, uh, thank you, my friend, and I yield back. Thank you, Congressman Takano, and thank you for all your advocacy and leadership. Appreciate you. My pleasure. I will now yield to my colleague from the Commonwealth of the great state of Massachusetts, a champion of LGBTQ plus rights and whose intersectional approach to all her work is just simply inspirational. Representative Ayanna Presley. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I rise in recognition of Transgender Day of Remembrance. In 1999, Rita Hester, a transgender woman, was murdered in Alston, a neighborhood in my district the Massachusetts 7th. In response to this horrific tragedy, this day was created to memorialize the loss of her life and far too many others due to transphobic violence. The cruelty of transphobia is a threat that we must confront and root out wherever it exists, whether in music or on television or in the hallowed halls of the nation's capital. There is no place for hatred because 
someone is brave enough to show up exactly as they are and to live their truth. Yet in 2021, we have seen at least 46 transgender or gender nonconforming people killed. We have been robbed of at least 46 souls, disproportionately black and Latinx trans women, and these are only the ones that have been properly reported. On the floor of Congress, we speak their names. Tiana Alexander, Samuel Edmund Damien Valentin, Bianca Muffin Banks, Dominique Jackson, 50 Bands, Alexis Braxton, China Carrillo, Jeffrey J.J. Bright, Jasmine Kennedy, Jenna Franks, Diamond Kyrie Sanders, Rayana Pardo, Jada Peterson, Dominique Lucius, Remy Fennell, Tiara Banks, Natalie Smut, Iris Santos, Tiffany Thomas, Carrie Washington, Whispering Wind Bear Spirit, Sophie Vasquez, Danica Danny Henson, Serenity Hollis, Oliver Ali Taylor, Thomas Harden, Poe Black, E.J. Boykin, Adeline Evans, Taya Ashton, Shai Vanderpump, Tierra Marie Lewis, Miss Coco, Pooh Johnson, Desaya Monet, Brianna Hamilton, Kier Cartier, Mel Goves, Royal Poetical Stars, Zoella Zoe Rose Martinez, Joe Acker, Jesse Hart, Ricky Atamoro, Markeisha Lawrence, Jenny D. Leon, and Jahira Dialto, who was murdered in my district. Jahira, a friend, a mother, and an activist who spoke out 22 years ago when Rita Hester was killed. As a survivor of domestic violence, she advocated for gender-affirming shelters and with kindness in her heart, opened her home to queer and trans people with nowhere to go. Jahira DeHalto's compassion will forever be her legacy alongside her legendary status in the ballroom community for serving everyday realness. While we grieve the loss of loved ones, neighbors, and colleagues, we must hold space to celebrate their life and the differences they make in ours. Transgender people are community organizers, military soldiers, justice seekers that put their bodies on the line, domestically and abroad to fight for a safe and equitable society. They are artists and healers and entertainers that nurture our soul and spread joy wherever they go. And most importantly, Transgender people are beacons of hope and pillars of courage, serving as living testaments of what it means to be unapologetically you. While transphobia seeks to erase these myths, we must affirm the dignity of every member of the trans community. So I rise today to recognize Transgender Day of Remembrance and recommit myself to the work of justice and equity for all people, including my transgender siblings in the movement for liberation. Our destinies are tied. I yield back. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Presley, and thank you for all your great work. Thank you for your good work. I will now yield to my colleague from the great state of California, the proud sister to a trans brother and gender nonconforming sibling, Representative Sarah Jacobs. Well, thank you, Congresswoman Newman, um, and thank you to the Equality Caucus for organizing this special order. Uh, as you mentioned, I am the proud sister of a trans brother and a gender nonconforming sibling. I'm also the proud representative of Hillcrest, the heart of San Diego's LGBTQ plus community. So this issue is deeply personal to me and the people that I love. And every time we hear about another trans person being murdered, I think about my siblings and my constituents. And my heart breaks because this epidemic of violence has gone on for too long. 
For too long, trans voices have been silenced, ignored, and disrespected. Whether they're trying to access health care, trying to find housing, or even when they're just trying to go about their daily lives, our trans neighbors and friends face discrimination, harassment, and a pervasive lack of resources. And even in this body, we have colleagues actively working to prevent equality for the trans community who continue to misgender and dehumanize our trans friends and family who want to continue denying them the support they need and who are trying to keep them on the margins of our society. And this rhetoric and this anti-trans legislation making its way through the country has real-world consequences. With the recent news of the killing of Marquisha Lawrence in South Carolina, 2021 just became the deadliest year on record for trans and non-binary people. This year alone, at least 45 trans people have been killed, and it is at least, because all too often when trans people are killed, the details of their lives are misreported. They're misgendered or deadnamed in police reports and death certificates, so not only are their lives being taken from them, their, authentic, their authentic identity, who they really were and fought so hard to be, is also being erased. So we must continue to say the names of people like Poe Black and Natalia Smut who were killed this year in California. Their lives are a reminder that we must continue to fight for trans equality, especially for trans women of color. And as important as it is to celebrate the lives of the trans people who were taken from us, we also need to celebrate trans people when they're still alive. So this Transgender Awareness Week, let us commit to uplifting trans people when they're still here, not only after they're gone. So to the trans community, I honor your strength and resilience. I will continue to make your voices heard in the halls of Congress, and I will continue to advocate for the support that you have been denied for far too long. And to any young person who's watching, know this. You are perfect, you are loved, and you are needed in this world exactly the way you are. And I will be here every day fighting for you. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Congresswoman Jacobs, for your kind remarks. Uh, we have one more speaker this evening, Madam Speaker. We have uh, Representative Al Green, an LGBTQ ally, and I will yield to him now. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the gentle lady as well. And still I rise, Madam Speaker, as a proud ally of the transgender community. And I rise tonight with a special message. This message means a lot to me because I truly believe that the pledge is correct. We pledge allegiance to a flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. All cannot exclude the trans community. All has to include the trans babies, the children in Texas who are having to suffer through debates about what they can do athletically. All has to include people who lose their lives simply because they're being who they are. I rise with the message of I am with you, I am your ally, and I live today to live to see the day that trans women will not have to live in fear of dying because of who they are. And trans children can grow up and simply be children in this country where we pledge liberty and justice for all. I thank you and I yield back. Thank you, Congressman Green, and uh, you are absolutely right. All is all, and love is love. That concludes our special order hour, and I want to thank each of my colleagues this evening for their participation, and Madam Speaker, I yield back.